Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back to Human Human Architecture here live from Honolulu, Hawaii. Today is very special. 2018 midterm election edition. So I'm going to say something that I never say and will never say again. You can leave now because you should, because there's, if you haven't voted, only then, because there's two hours left and every vote counts. So that being said, welcome back because you're now watching at YouTube when you come back from voting. But we're going to keep on going here uh, because I thought, how can I best address this sort of special day and myself being a uh, first generation immigrant here to this lovely island and the United States as well. So I felt most comfortable to get a fellow uh, previous former alien. <laughs> and so I have Mireille Turin with me. Hi, Mireille. Hello. Thanks for being here together. And if we can get up slide number one, um, the ones of you who don't know me, Ray, you can go back to the previous show, which was called Urban Transcendence. And that, of course, needs to be updated because that's been several years. But we introduce you where you come from and how you got here. And the picture in the middle is, is the clue, is the key. The show was called From the Mountains to the Trees. And you came here having won a, a tree house competition. And so you're sort of vision to live year-round outside in the trees drove you here and basically kept you here. But then at the very top left, uh, you sort of moved on to a little bit more domesticized tree house, I guess. And this is the Lily Strand house up there. And you actually lived with Vicky and Bob uh, for, for a little while. And we did a show, a show with, with Bob about um, the house. And so we were looking for a house that maybe best embodies why we Americanos are so thrilled to be here. So something that we won't find where we're from. And you're, by the way, from Switzerland and I'm from Germany. So mm -hmm. something that is unique here to the island we're looking for. And the two pictures at the bottom here is uh, from the last show with DeSoto. This gives us a clue because DeSoto came back while researching up on the University Hill. And he said, wow, there's one building that I'm extremely um, fascinated by. And that's Keller Hall. And that's by the architect that we're going to introduce today with uh, another piece of work that you, Mireille, are very, very familiar with. And let's move to the next picture, slowly but surely getting closer. We both brought our textbooks, our related textbooks, from this famous German publisher, Taschen, here which we call Taschen books, Taschen Bücher. And why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit why you associate that book with the project you're going to introduce to us? So I brought along uh, the Prouvé book here, that one. Mm -hmm. And Jean Prouvé was a, an engineer architect in France in the 1920s to the 60s mostly. And he was also collaborating with Le Corbusier. And he invented a lot of interesting steel structures, steel facades, and fast uh, uh, buildings that could be set up really fast in the tropics or for, for affordable housing. So mm -hmm. in a certain way, the, the method of construction that we will see in our mm -hmm. house that we're going to present today, uh, I, I was sort of reminded to, to his work, mm -hmm. to the French architect's work, and um, we'll, we'll probably see a little bit why. Yeah, that, and that also you reminded me, or had to <laughs> tell me, had to educate me, that the architect we're going to introduce today has worked with Peter Shi, and Peter had a show here, and this mm -hmm. is on the very top right here is the screenshot of his show. We weren't able to reach out to Peter again for this show, so we're sort of on our own, and do our research. So I brought my Taschenbuch as well, which is the next slide, please, because um, it reminded me uh, very much of the case study house series up in California by Intenza initiated. And then Julius Schulman was the one who did this amazing photographs and mm -hmm. that basically brought it to the entire world. And architects were looking up to America being so progressive. 
And one of the case study house architects we have on the island, that's Edward, Edward Killingsworth, and we did the Kahala Hilton uh, Hotel and the apartments mm -hmm. um, and, and some other buildings. Uh, one of them, we will do a show when I'm back in Germany in the spring. One of the first shows will be about a hotel renovation that will then belong to the Halle Kalani. So, but then we, we were digging deeper and we looked at, or I looked at Killingsworth and I thought there's actually another guy that applies more to uh, the house we're going to talk about today. And that's this book here by Pierre Koenig, um, this one here, this guy. And, and his case study house, if you can go back to the uh, third slide, uh, at the very bottom left of, third, uh, of the third slide, um, the next one, please, yeah. Um, that's the most iconic, I guess, and the most famous of the case study houses. The number is 22, and it's the Stahl House. Um, I was uh, getting as close as the very picture on the on the right bottom, where uh, when I was in the uh, Hollywood Hills, it was not open at that day, so I could only go to it from the very bottom and did this shot here. And I, I ran into this lady in her Escalade Cadillac who had a pathetic Tuscany-style home, and I was there with my, pre my old big boat car, and she was suspicious what I'm doing there. And I said, well, you know, I'm, this is that famous house. And she's like, what famous house? So she didn't know, she had no clue. And I said, well, you gotta understand there might be more people like me showing up because this is something that many people in the world basically worship. And my dear sister, Cynthia, actually had the chance when she was still in the animation industry shortly after she came out of school. Um, she knew people who knew people who knew uh, Joel Silva, who is the uh, one who did the Matrix movies, and he used to own the house by that time, so she knows it from inside. And um, so that's that. That's sort of you know how we can sort of the context we can put the the project in um, that we're going to talk today about. So let's go to the next slide. And, and, and this, is, this is your house, and it reminds me very much sort of the, this approach to the street of these houses is very much that people say, where is the house? I just see walls and mm -hmm. you know, I don't see a door. So it's the opposite to the Victorian, where it's like it's very impressive and very representative and you know, a big fake front as you mm -hmm. find out when you go through, because then it's like, oh, well, this is it. With these houses, it's almost the opposite, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. And we wanted to say something in German. In Germany, we call that um, außen fui und innen hui, <laughs> which I don't know how to translate that actually, but maybe we'll well, in, in a certain way, I find it's like it's like a, a shell, a clam shell, and mm -hmm. inside there's a pearl, you know. Oh, but the outside good... is very yeah. almost plain looking, yeah, 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 yeah. But but by the time you you take the pain to get to know the person mm -hmm. or the building in that, yeah. that case, um, you actually see all the beauties that are inherent yeah. in, this, in this design and, and we'll Yeah, and the little picture to... on, the, on the top left is an association you have sort of with the strategy of the building, right? And mm -hmm. it's a reference back home mm -hmm. to Le Corbusier again. Yeah, because um, the way that the building's been this constructed reminded me of like, you know, building a, a structure with posts and pier and lintels and the roof first, mm -hmm. and then you're already mm -hmm. in the dry, so mm -hmm. to speak. And, and that was the idea with Le Corbusier's house uh, mm -hmm. in, Zur in Zurich. Mm -hmm. um, but in this case, it's even more, I think, uh, interesting because the location where the house is situated gets a lot of rainfall. And, mm -hmm. and um, it's kind of like at the cusp where it's rainy and dry. So it's mm -hmm. right in that, mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. interstitial mm -hmm. space. And I, I could imagine that it was really beneficial for the people that had to work on that construction site mm -hmm. to have a roof over their head mm -hmm. fairly quickly mm -hmm. and then, you know, do the build out uh, while being in the dry. So, yeah, yeah, so I yeah. thought that was very clever. And, uh, it sure is. Yeah. And so before you walk us through the house, um, <clears throat> let's go to the next slide because this was me uh, when you had me over. And uh, you can see something at the very front left um, is something that's new to that wall. And then it has to do with a gentleman at the very top right who is Don Hibbert. Mm -hmm. uh, because the story is, I mean, in a nutshell, from my point of view, that you, I remember, you reached out to me and you said, well, there's this, there's this project I'm asked to basically look at the kitchen, maybe remodel it. And then you said, once I saw mm -hmm. 
what's around the kitchen, you basically they gave the recommendation not to do anything, at least not the way they wanted it. Mm -hmm. And that's how the whole project started, which we're excited to hear Correct. from yeah. you now. Yeah. What's it all about the house and you? So, yeah, so I was asked uh, almost four and a half years ago, or maybe even five now, to look at the kitchen of this house. And um, as we talked about before, you know, the house looks very plain from the outside, and I didn't really expect that much. And by the time I got inside the house, we didn't come through the more representative entrance. We came through the entrance that's more towards the kitchen. Mm -hmm. I was just blown away by the potential that was in this building. And I told the clients right away that uh, I don't want to touch any of the structural elements and, mm -hmm. and none of the you know, the layout, the way it's been joined and everything. But I, I think the house could need some TLC and just, just bring it back to its mm -hmm. original or as close to its original glory mm -hmm. as possible. But it wasn't a very easy task to, to begin with. Uh, we, we didn't talk for another two years, and then they asked me again to do something with the kitchen, and I told them again, well, you know, I think we should really approach this very delicately. Mm -hmm. And by the time I ha had a thought that I could actually show them the Lilia Strand house and, and sort of remind them or show them or introduce them to almost a sibling, you mm -hmm, know, because mm -hmm. there's so many details in that particular house that are very... Absolutely. I mean, identical to, yeah. to certain um, things at the Lilia Strand house. And, and after they saw the house, they, they, they jumped on the wagon mm -hmm. and, and were mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. excited to, yeah. to take that trip. And so. you, and the end of the trip, we're at the beginning of it, mm -hmm. but the conclusion is the success is that, you know, it's on the historic list now, so yeah. it's registered, yeah. so it's preserved mm -hmm. for the coming generations mm -hmm. to show. And as we believe, it's a very unique house. But let's walk in. So next slide is basically you. Here you are, and you walk us in now. So, so this is like the breezeway mm -hmm. of the house. And that breezeway connects the carport with that same roof, the metal decking roof, mm -hmm. uh, with the proper house. And yeah. we'll see the later. That would be an entrance to the uh, more Pub yeah. private spaces and then on the opposite side of that little mm -hmm. courtyard is a more representative entrance for guests. And once again, as we say, you don't run straight into the ha into the no, door, no. which is the Victorian yeah, way, but yeah. sort of it's he sort of a, he goes sideways, he takes yeah. you around. It's a tangential yeah. approach yeah. and yeah. almost yeah. I would I would sort of like um, um, refer it to the promenade architecturale a little mm -hmm, bit that mm -hmm. Le Corbusier introduced, mm -hmm, where you mm -hmm. actually, by walking, experiencing the space, you discover yeah, yeah, yeah. new facets yeah, yeah. and new yeah, yeah. ideas, and, and yeah. you're getting more and more excited, yeah, basically. Yeah. And so. I mean, uh, other American masters, like from Frank Lloyd Wright, did that a lot. You mm -hmm. can see that in Oak Park, almost every other mm -hmm. house. Lucan did it, you know, in his very different yeah. way, but there is a great tradition to yeah. that that is sort of the anti Mm -hmm. missionary, you know, mm -hmm. the anti-British, you know, yeah, yeah. that sort of, you know, uh, my home is my castle approach, mm -hmm. right, of, mm -hmm. of wanting to show off. So let's check out that entrance, go to the next slide, please, and here it so is. So we're looking kind of back from that breezeway towards the house, and you see these really interesting sliding doors that have this um, hourglass um, uh, inlay, basically, mm -hmm. and that that would be the more representative entrance for guests, and um, that would also lead directly into the living room, mm -hmm. the main living mm -hmm. room. Mm -hmm. um, the yeah. horizontal band that we see there, the horizontal window band, actually is is a is the kitchen mm -hmm. window, are mm -hmm. the kitchen windows, and and that to me already when I first approached the house had this sort of Jetson yeah. feel yeah, to yeah. me. So I was really excited to you know, actually enter the house yeah, once yeah. I came around that first yeah, yeah. garage mm -hmm. wall, so carport wall. It was really interesting. You remember from, because you're a fellow practicator as well as practicing and educating mm -hmm. architecture, when you were still at school, which you hopefully will be soon again, uh, Maggie Sagi Mackey was mm -hmm. still there, and Maggie was here briefly, yeah. and 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 we gave a gave a talk here, and there was a house at the very top right, a reference to that show that had ex almost exactly that sort of triangular door pattern mm -hmm. and even the color as you can see. Yeah, so it yeah. was it was it was a universal thing that mm -hmm. then got sort of tweaked, you know, and customized to the local, mm -hmm. but it was sort of up in the air, right? Mm -hmm. In a in a all well, the yeah. Jetsons, you know, yeah. that, that yeah. was a 
cosmic thing. It wasn't just specific to a certain place. It was yeah, just now referring to the color palette that you just mentioned. I mean, that was the atomic age, and mm -hmm, you actually have mm -hmm. that term, atomic color. I yeah. mean, they're like an actual color yeah, range yeah, yeah. that people uh -huh. would use for posters or yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, architecture, no, whatnot. Actually, you know, so so it's a very. Mm -hmm. Encompassing yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, aspect. I mean, mm -hmm. we're talking, by the way, about the late 50s here, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. the building was built in 58, 59. Yeah, so, yeah. so that's yeah. full on that, that kind yeah. of age. Of and I, I believe, and you know, probably well deserved or you know, no doubt, there's probably still viewers who say, okay, what's so cool about the house? It's still like sort of Hui, so where's the Hui? So let's go to the Hui, <laughs> let's go inside. and. That's the moment that you had, right? Yeah. This is the wow effect. Yeah. So, so we're looking at basically the the opposite way from the bed, from the living room out to the outside of that that main entrance door, and um, the the very amazing thing was actually that the owners originally got these um, mahogany um, furniture from Denmark proper. I mean, they had like an uncle or a brother of their father was basically shipping a container full with modern Danish design. Mm -hmm. And it, of course, works absolutely harmonically and perfectly with the building itself. Mm -hmm. So it's, mm -hmm. it's really uh, a pearl that, that mm -hmm. we unearthed there. And let's keep on moving. Let's go to the next slide, which is sort of looking the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. So looking so, through, I mean, this is like the case study houses. You, you basically look through the building, right? There is a yeah. seamless transition between inside and outside. Yes, and they have this uh, really large uh, door assembly. We only see two now, but there's you, you can see the part of the mirrored ones. So it's it's basically four huge doors mm -hmm. that open to a side um, yard uh, mm -hmm. entrance. Uh, yeah, side yard, and and um, yeah, the the connection between inside and outside mm -hmm. is very prevalent, and the Louvered, the wood louvered windows are also very critically placed because they're sort of on opposite angles mm -hmm. and they make great cross ventilation. Mm -hmm. We never mm -hmm. need any um, air conditioning in mm -hmm. this house. It's, you got the best yeah. air conditioning, the trade yeah. wind air conditioning yeah. working here. Let's take a left turn and go to the kitchen as sort of the heart of the building here. here we so are. we're looking back from the kitchen towards that living room. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a light trough that sort of connects both spaces, the dining room space and the living room space. And mm -hmm. it kind of jogs around um, the, that back wall there. Mm -hmm. And we see already the, the kitchen counter. It's almost a small island. And, and in that sense, a very modern mm -hmm. um, layout for a kitchen. I mean, very which, unusual. The, which the, is also almost the standard today, but yeah, way back, it yeah. was more the separated room. It would right? be a, a wall and just a yeah. door that you mm -hmm. can close. And, mm -hmm. and basically, so it's an open kitchen connecting visually and spatially with mm -hmm. the dining room mm -hmm. area. And you know why there's so much light on the on the furniture? We will see in the next slide because mm -hmm. that's what's behind us. If we go to the next page here, yeah. So this is now the look towards the side entrance, with which has a louvered door, and another big sliding door array um, assembly on the on the right hand side, mm -hmm. and the look into the kitchen through mm -hmm. that horizontal window band to the carport, and mm -hmm. what. I guess we haven't talked about really is the ceiling that mm -hmm. is very unique, mm -hmm. um, which is part of that post and pier and metal um, column, very thin metal columns, basically two inch diam diameters. Which is, wow, it's which like is spaghetti. super, super thin. Mm -hmm. And the, the junior beams are like eight, nine inches tall and super thin as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then on top of these uh, beams lays uh, uh, what they called Robertson decking. It's this trapezoidal mm -hmm. decking that is a structural membrane in itself. So it's super thin. The whole roof is only like three inches tall mm -hmm. with a layer of insulation, mm -hmm. cork, and mm -hmm. then just a mm -hmm. built-up roof. I mean, mm -hmm. that's all mm -hmm. there is. It's never, like, the sound is perfect. If it rains, it's not loud. It's, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. totally mm -hmm. amazing. And that's, that's what makes the Stahlhaus, you know, has the same, if you go back to the studio here, to the book. You can see here on the title, on the cover page of the book here in studio, um, you can see the same corrugated metal here. Mm -hmm. So that is like the industrial look, right, that they yeah. introduced. Yeah. And the goal was actually, we should say, to make very affordable houses mm -hmm. for the middle class, mm -hmm. right? 
and by you know prefabrication and using industrial materials that sort of achieved the goal pretty much and and the surprise is that you would think, well, it, it looks not homey, right? Mm -hmm. But as you can see here, the contrast that you preserved, or you, we should say brought back, because you told me when you got into the house, everything was a big pile of mm -hmm. things, and mm -hmm. you needed to go and, and sort things and put it all back in place mm -hmm. and sort of reorchestrate it back yeah, to yeah. the original, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So that wasn't the condition you found no, when you no, came no. in. It was more I the... Mean, as you can imagine, if a house has been lived in for 60 years almost, yeah. um, and, you know, things accumulate and, mm -hmm. and you know, it's, it's not easy to keep a house mm -hmm. in, in tip-top mm -hmm. shape mm -hmm. all the time. So it was actually almost like an archaeological mm -hmm. situation and, and, you know, removing, for instance, um, window treatments that were, were very opaque mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, didn't allow for any view. Yeah, that yeah. was a huge thing and also now the clear story that you see with the vertical louvers uh, is in is Absolutely. is working again and and so mm -hmm. it just um very very much yeah we got to keep and sort of speeding up a little bit going mm -hmm. through the house because time is flying by fast here let's go to the next page and let's go to the sort of the bedroom part of the house mm -hmm. which yeah. is sort of in behind you know Maybe the table again, if you keep whole, on going this whole theme of tangentially mm -hmm. moving through the mm -hmm. house. This mm -hmm. is another, uh, you know, opening that's alongside a wall and yeah. it leads us to the private rooms uh, mm -hmm. in, a, in a corridor mm -hmm. coming from slab on grade, concrete slab on grade to now uh, wood flooring mm -hmm. in the lower, and, in the back And let's rooms. go there. That's mm -hmm. the next slide here. So this is the former twins room now uh, transformed into my office temporarily. Mm -hmm. and, and you see the, the hardwood floor uh, it's a direct uh, three, three and a quarter inch uh, oak floor directly sitting on, on mm -hmm. six inch joists, wood joists. I mean, it's super direct. And yeah, and we'll look at it from below yeah, exactly. at, the, at the end. So but, let's keep on looking in the other direction in that room, right? Mm -hmm. That's your view from yeah. your desk. Have a nice little lounge area there, and yeah. So maybe what's what's kind of interesting is how somebody actually took the paint to cut out that trapezoidal shape out of these tempered hardwood hardboards. Mm -hmm. So so very amazing joinery that, that very we intricate, see here. Yeah, yeah, very detailed. So let's move on to the bedroom. Well, this is um, still part of that. This is still part space. of that yeah. one. Yeah. Let's move on one more which is the bedroom here. Yeah, so we see like four uh, wood louvered windows uh, next to each other facing a beautiful yard in the back. Mm -hmm. And again, the clear story with the vertical glass louvers. Yeah. Uh, amazing cool climate in there yeah, and, yeah. and it's it's really and these glass super. lures if we go to the next slide please remind me going back the mm -hmm. left half of that composition here is me back to Keller Hall where I went through the hallways and I saw one door, this is a bathroom, still has the vertical glass louvers. Um, and unfortunately they were taken out and the whole thing was air conditioned. And it also has these very nice uh, Z-shaped um, aluminum shading louvers that have a little crank on the inside to basically turn them. Mm -hmm. Everything is unfortunately, you know, falling apart and we don't do enough maintenance uh, for that, which is a shame. Again, credits to you. You stepped in, which our university is obviously struggling to do. You mm -hmm. stepped in as a private person and mm -hmm. basically did that. And, and, and you can see a similarity of, um, you know, very clever joinery and carpenter details. And, and you know, using very simple, uh, you know, very low key and, and low tech materials mm -hmm. that perform very well, yeah. both aesthetically and functionally. And mm -hmm. you were very super excited about these uh, drawer doors. Yeah, uh, these, these sliding mm -hmm. closet doors. They're just basically made out of pegboards uh, mounted on a one by three mm -hmm. uh, substructure. And um, it perfectly ventilates your closet space, so there's no mold, yeah. no nothing in your for your clothes. It's it's and, really and that's one of the cheapest ideal. materials yeah, available like, still these days. I don't know, you know. ten dollars a exactly. sheet or something. And how beautiful, both <laughs> functionally and performatively, yeah. like nature is. Yeah. Uh, one last view from your picture, and who was the photo, uh, the photographer again? Uh, of all um, these? Koenig. Oh. Uh, what's his name? Uh, now you tricked me into now we, we get question. we get back let's move yeah, on and yeah, give you time yeah. buy you time let's go to the yeah. bathroom here which you had some we're running out of time so we got to go fast but mm -hmm. again you were 
very sort of, you know, uh, a good mentor for the building and, and, and trying to, you know, talk the clients into doing very careful and keeping the integrity uh, renovations and, and not going to modernize in a way that it would sort of violate the integrity and certain things, you know, you were able to accomplish. And, and we could do a whole nother show about that because he taught me so many things, but we got to move on and go to the next slide here, which as we promised, this is us looking underneath and you can see that sort of the steel beams here and these, uh, these wooden rafters and then just the, the, the wooden uh, flooring is just basically on top of that. And we were saying this is like, you call this in the wall, a single wall construction. This is single floor construction. Precisely. And yeah. everything yeah. is visible, so yeah. you can maintain it, you can mm -hmm. monitor it. We were saying you can have the chicken running there and they eat the termites. So it's yeah. like the most obvious way to do it. Mm -hmm. and again, very sort of reminiscent of Prevay's way of working mm -hmm. in the tropics, yeah. right? Yeah. And we, so phasing out here is the, the, uh, the next slide here is, which you already referred to in your bedroom. You said, you know, it's, it's the view, right? Yeah, so it's, yeah. I mean, you, you're in the tropics. You mm -hmm. have these amazing fruits here mm -hmm. that, you know, the low hanging fruit. Extremely low hanging, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, the jackfruit on the left hand side is, is really producing a lot of fruits, even on the, on the yeah. trunk. And, and yeah. we have this Polynesian uh, coconut tree that the fruits are really hanging yeah, yeah, yeah. right on your eye level. Or and so. and next slide, there's also a significant sort of, mm -hmm. you know, space left open to be the outdoor extension of the indoor space, mm -hmm. right? And I know that these are very attractive for people to maximize their profitability and they put these ADUs in their backyards. Mm -hmm. And I would say, hey, please don't do this here because it's so much a composition. Mm -hmm. And I think the outdoor space should be historically preserved as well. So I would suggest to put the money into the house versus outside of the house. But that's just me and my personal sort of feeling. <laughs> so we got a minute left. So um, next slide, I want to thank you for being here, for what you've done for the house and maintain it for the future generations. And here is the future generation that you basically had over at your house mm -hmm. uh, and was uh, we're doing a studio project, which we call uh, Cargo Courtyard Cabanas. It's about repurposing cargo steel, trying to avoid to say shipping containers. And you pointed out there's a lot of similarity in sort of the thinking mm -hmm. and the making of you know spaces and places and materiality. Mm -hmm. So so thank you for yeah. having yeah and the dimensioning. That. We never talked about the bays are mm -hmm. eight, mm -hmm. eight foot six on center, so that's very close to yeah 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 steel. What do you call them? <laughs> <laughs> Not container. Yeah, um, cargo, cargo courtyard cabanas. Yeah. <laughs> right. So uh, last slide is here. Us uh, thanking our partners in life, you and your husband Harald, um, yeah. who puts up with you through this process, <laughs> and you know you sort of infected him, uh, you know, with this sort of fetishism about mid-century modern mm -hmm. and. And as well, my partner, Suzanne, who puts up with me being excited about all these things. And, and she uh, has a sort of affinity to sort of young living. That's why we call it the show uh, as what she's pursuing as a business here in a different way, but also a related way sort of about the essence of things, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think this is what it's about and sort of rejuvenate that sort of lifestyle. Mm -hmm you know, about being more in, in touch with the elements again and with oneself and, and architecture that sort of can catalyze that, right? That's correct. So with that, we want to thank you again. Um, thank and, you for um, having me. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, next week, um, we're going to have uh, a show with Richard Lowe, who is another eyewitness from these glorious days. And Richard is going to talk about the ward Wonder World. He was working for Victoria Ward, and that's equally fascinating yeah. um, as you know the world of Clifford Young here. So uh, until then, please uh, stay young at heart and soul, and see us next week. Bye bye. <laughs>